If it's too good to be true, more times than not, it is. That's how we do it in the sound. What's going on, guys? Welcome to Rabbits Use Cars. Man, it's been a freaking crazy, crazy week. You got to understand, it's not even been a week yet. It's actually been, well, the time we're filming this, so the time you see it, it'll be a week. But it's been a crazy four days. Four days. Netflix show dropped. You know, my phone started blowing up. Everybody on social media, and you guys came out in groves watching it. And this is the thing that's crazy. You know, I say this 50 times a week. I'm a glorified used car salesman. But when you've got, you can't help but get a little excited. When you filmed a TV show with four other people that you didn't know, and you've got a show that's in the top 10 on Netflix in two days, that's running with a TV show with Arnold Schwarzenegger in it. Not bad for a used car dealer in Seneca, South Carolina. Notice number six in the U U.S., number 13 in the world right now. That's insane. Number nine in the U.K., number six in New Zealand, if you want to break it down. That's right, kids, taking it worldwide. You know, I'm so excited about that. But, yeah, we got to get back here and do a little business. And there is something I want to talk to you guys about. And it's going to lead to an interesting story. We all got that friend who can get it cheaper. That guy. You know, we used to call them ask holes. Because they'll ask you 40 million questions about something and then go do something totally different and they waste your time. We all have those friends. But this is the one time where that bit him in the ass. And you can learn from this. And there's a little saying that goes with it, and I'll share with you guys, too. I've got a friend, and I want to say friend, I want to use that term extremely loose, more of an acquaintance. But if I saw him in a crowd, I would probably wave. I want to buy this truck you got. Man, I love that truck. I love it. You know me. I'm a salesman. This is what I do. Hey. It's got this, 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 and this. Man, we'll put you right. I'll treat you right on it. Well, what's the best money you can sell it to me for? And I told him. And the thing you got to understand about me is the way I sell cars. You know, a lot of people, they'll sit on a car for years to get their price. I am not that guy. I love keeping the inventory rolling. I love new, fresh stuff coming in. I love just getting different cars. I'm the kind of guy that I want to be volume. I would much rather have 20 customers making a couple grand a pop than one customer I made five grand off of. Um, I've always had that mindset. I'm not saying either one's wrong or whatever or right. But back to my buddy. So when I price something like that for somebody and I cut you a deal, I'll be honest with you, it's usually probably a pretty good deal. And, and I did. I said, listen, yeah, we cut the bullshit right now, and you could be in this for this. I don't know. Is that the best you could do? And, of course, he throws the friend thing in. You know, I'm your boy. And he said, I'll tell everybody about you. And I said, well, I ain't got a real hard time for people to know who I am, so I don't really need that. But this is as good as it gets, bud. You know, we all got to eat. And uh, he's like, ah, let me think about it. And that's, that right there is the kiss of death. Let me think about it. Translation, let me shop around. It's a free country. Do what you want to do, bud. Have at it. If you don't buy it, someone else will. And in fact, they did just a few days later. So he's shopping around for this truck. He's shopping around for this truck. And then he starts sending me screenshots of like marketplace ads and Craigslist ads. You think it's a good deal? You think it's a good deal? 
and they're, they're all over the place. There was one in Texas. There was one up north somewhere. You know, one down in Florida. He said to these two, now you want me to consult you on buying a vehicle, but you didn't want to buy mine. And, you know, I'm not going to be an asshole. I mean, yeah, yeah, it looks great, man. It looks good, whatever, you know? And uh, I talked to the guy on the phone. I got the deal of a lifetime. And he found a truck that in pictures looked comparable to what I sold. And uh, he's like, man, I found the deal. He said, I've talked this guy down. He goes, I bent him over a barrel. And I said, congratulations, congratulations. Enjoy your truck. So they line up transport, get the truck picked up. And I'm, I don't remember right off where it came out of. I'm wanting to say Florida. It was the Florida one they bought. But anyway, so truck gets here and it came at night. And they unloaded off the truck. He's sending me videos of and text. Thumbs up, but congratulations, you know, whatever. So he uh, he keeps truck for a few days. But he's sending me pictures, man. This thing you won't believe how nice it is. I'm like, who you trying to sell it to? You know, but but it was. He's proud of it. You know, hey, like I said, it's a buddy. Next thing you know, it's this. Well, how much do you think it costs to fix this? I noticed when I was waxing it. It's got a little bit of paint fade down here. You think when your paint guys can straighten that out? I know my paint guys can straighten it out. The trick is you need to find you some paint guys that can do it. You know, I'm not, if I'm not getting paid on this deal, I'm not giving out my favors. And the more pictures I've seen of this truck, like his pictures, you know, it was all right. And you know, and he was happy with it. Hey, I'm excited for him. At the end of the day, I sold my truck anyway. It doesn't really matter, you know? Kind of a funny story. It was a square body truck, I will tell you that much. I don't want to give out too much information on this, but anyway, so he has to leave the truck sitting outside over a weekend, clean out the garage, doing something. Come a hell of a rainstorm. And his windshield was leaking. He said the top of the dash was soaked, where the windshield was leaking right at the top of the, you know, the top of the top of the windshield right there. And you got to think on a square body, it's just a rubber gasket. And uh, he says, pouring like crazy. And the thing is with that rubber gasket, if you got somebody that puts a windshield in that doesn't know what they're doing, those things will leak like crazy. You know, it's not like it's glued in like a new car windshield. So anyway, he said, do you know a glass guy that can straighten this out? And I, and I did. And I called him up. I got a great glass guy up in town. And, you know, he came over there and glass guy, obviously to fix it, you're going to, have to put a new seal on it because that seal, you know, had been on there for a little while. It was all out of shape, whatever. So he popped the windshield out and to actually take the windshield out, right? You actually got to cut the seal. So anyway, so I guess he cut the seal, popped the windshield out. He had the windshield on, on his little stands right there. He's showing me, sending me pictures of this, it's just like I'm there. And then I get a phone call. I'm like, oh Lord, what's this? And I opened my phone and he goes, we got a little problem. What's wrong, what's wrong with your truck? He goes, there's no VIN plate. And I'm like, what do you mean there's no VIN plate? He goes, there's no VIN plate on it. He said, he took the windshield out and he said, you know, I didn't really look and I didn't pay attention when I looked at it either, you know? But he said, I didn't look, and it was kind of dark in there, you know, with the dashes and all that stuff. And he goes, you can see where it was, but it's not there now. He goes, what do I do? And I said, well, do you have a title to this truck? He said, yeah. And I said, well, you need to contact the owner or the guy you bought it from. I said, first of all, I said, was the title in his name? And the title wasn't, it was an open title, and the title was from another state that wasn't the state he bought it from. And he goes, well, I'm just going to have a VIN plate made. And I said, whoa, 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 whoa. 
You don't touch that. You know, that's the thing. Yeah, people do it all the time, but that's not something you do. And I said, you need to get a hold of whoever you bought this truck from and ask why it doesn't have a VIN plate. And keep in mind, this is an older vehicle, because I know what somebody's going to say. It's on the frame rail, or it's on this. Yeah, it is. But you don't know if they changed the frame rail on that truck. This truck's 35 years old. Yeah. So anyway, moving on. Goes to contact the guy he bought the truck from. No answer. So he stuck with this title. Well, one thing leads to another. And he has this title to this truck. Well, he's going to go ahead and register it. You don't have to have a VIN plate on a vehicle to register it. So he goes to the DMV to register it. Well, as soon as he runs this title through the DMV, it gets flagged. And they said that we've got a problem in our system. We can't print you a title at this moment for it. So now he has a truck with no VIN plate and no proof of ownership. DMV took his title and they can't make him a new one because this thing was flagged in the system. End of the day, I see my camera guy over here flammering around like I'm talking too much. But end of the day, he got DMV contacted him back, said, this title, this VIN number has been cut out of the system. So this is an old title and somebody got a duplicate title from it. So they've killed that title to that VIN number. And he said, on top of that, that truck is registered in whatever state this title came out of. So now he has a title to a truck he doesn't own and he has a truck with no VIN plate. Can't get a hold of the guy he bought it from, keeps trying him, can't get a hold of him, he's gone. Calls the police. That's white collar crime, it's going across state lines. You know, does all that. Well, they start doing a little digging, start doing a little looking, and guess what? His truck was stolen. I hate it. You know, on one hand, you're like, oh, you know, it serves him right. The shallow side of me, yes, it does 100% serve some right. But the other side of that is, you know, you got to be so careful. You got to, I mean, there's so many slick guys out there doing stuff, and that was not a slick job, but there's so many guys out there doing shady things, and you got to watch everything. I do not buy one vehicle till the title is matched to the car. Every one. That's something you must do. You never buy a car and put that title in your hand. The very first thing you need to do is walk your ass left side, bottom of that windshield and look and match that number. Make sure you can see all 17 digits or whatever digits it's got that it's on there. So when they said that truck was stolen, what do you think they did with it? They took the truck. So now he has no title, no money and no truck. And he learned a very valuable lesson. And this is something you got to think about when you start price shopping things. Long after the sweetness of that good deal is all the bullshit you got to deal with, the bitterness. And that's the thing. You know, I hate it. I really do. I hate that he got took and I hate that he got scammed. But in the same token, he could have prevented all of this so easy by asking a few questions, doing a few things, asking the right questions instead of worrying about getting the cheapest truck. Because usually, if the truck's really nice or anything, if it's too good to be true, more times than not, it is. A little PSA for you guys. Guys, we'll catch you next time at Rabbit Shoes Cars.